you build a new pond, the pond should be rectangular in shape, between 150 and 1,800 square meters in size, with walls 1.5 to 2 meters high for scale fish and around 2.5 to 3 meters high for catfish. A normal size of pond that is easy to manage is 500 square meters. The pond walls should slope down in order to avoid eroding. The width of the sloping down part will be different depending on the type of soil. By proportion 1 meter deep and 1 meter slope distance for clay, 1.5 meter for clay mixed with sand or pebble. After that, you have to build the dam to prevent the pond from allowing any dirty water to flow in. Plant grass to avoid erosion and create a pipeline for getting the water in and out. After building the pond, you need to put the water in. In case it is an old pond, you have to drain it right away in order to catch snakehead fish, snakes, and crabs. Fill the crab holes and any other holes then clear the mud from the pond and repair any damaged sides of the pond. Next, spread lime powder in the pond. Use around 5 to 10 kilograms for every 100 square meters to kill any bacteria, snakes, eels, and crabs. Keep the pond dry for two to three days to reduce poison gas. Pour the water in the pond and keep for two or three days. Build a dam to prevent the pond from getting any dirty water in. Step 2. Releasing fingerling into the pond. Buy fingerling from a nearby hatchery because they will be adapted to the local pond's water. The size of the fingerling should be 5 to 6 centimeters long and in good health. Fingerlings should be released when the water is cool, preferably in the morning around 9 a.m. For Pongsias, Traipra, release around 10 to 15 fish per square meter because they adapt easily in any pond. For silver carp, release around three to six fish per square meter because they need more space and oxygen. For tilapia, release around one to two fish per square meter because they reproduce quickly. Step three, food for the fish. Supplemental feed and a pellet feed supplemental feed. The fish farmer can make a formula of fish food in a proportion of 50% rice bran, 10% broken rice, 10% soybeans, and 30% fish trash. Pellet feed. This kind of feed is produced domestically and also imported from other countries. Step 4. Feeding. Set a regular place and time for feeding because fish can remember the place and time they eat their food. Feeding should be done twice a day. The appropriate time is around 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. because of the cooler weather and higher oxygen levels in the pond. The quantity of feed to provide per day is around 4 to 5 percent of the total weight of the fish in the pond. The feed for the fish should be cooked and then kept cool before feeding. The feed can be crushed by hand as it is thrown into the pond or it can be crushed by a machine and thrown into the pond directly. Step 5. 
Step 5. Managing the Pond The water should be fresh. 20 to 30 percent of the water should be changed every month. Take out any sugar palm leaves, wood, and bamboo from the pond. Because it causes fish to die, it makes the water dirty. Step 6. Fish Diseases If the level of pH is higher than 7.8, 20 to 30 percent of the water should be changed that day and again for the next two to three days. If the level of pH is lower than 7, the fish will either grow slowly or not grow at all. Using too much fish feed will result in the uneaten feed to remain in the pond. It will decompose, giving off poison gas and causing a buildup of nitrate that will make the water dirty and poisonous, causing fish diseases like ulcers. If this happens, the water should be pumped out from the pond and refilled with fresh water. <laughs>